So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having me. Um, the reason that I'm here is we had an incident recently at the hospital where we had an individual come in that was quite uh, disturbed mentally. Uh, and in the course of the conversation, it turns out that he had obtained some of the so-called fake marijuana, K2 spices, lots of names. We all know, I think, what we're talking about. And uh, he, he obtained it from a local merchant. And I had had somebody about a month or so ago, same story, obtained it from another local merchant, of course, under the counter, because everybody knows it's not good. Now, I talked to the police chief, as a matter of fact, that was there at the time for the second incident. I asked him, I said, how is it that this is sold in town? This is illegal in this state. I think it was made illegal about a year or so ago. And his response was, well, there's nothing we can do about it because we don't know exactly what it is. Now, a little bit of background. This is a, a designer drug. Uh, basically, these chemists have taken the basic active ingredient of marijuana, and then they've changed it a little bit. Well, unfortunately, the way that works with so-called designer drugs is the, the authorities can make this particular substance illegal, but then a chemist comes in and tweaks it a little bit and changes one little side group, and all of a sudden, it's not covered under the law. And I think that's the point that the police uh, were making. Apparently, this was also presented to the city attorney, who was uh, apparently, by what I was told, there's nothing we can do about this. Now, I just don't accept that, okay? This is a public health menace. People in our town are being adversely affected by this illegal substance that's being sold boldly right here in town. And I'd like to know why we can't do anything about it. And, and that's just not acceptable. I mean, what if it's sure. one of your relatives? But one of the things that we've given you some thought, I visited with Ted about it some before, uh, we, well, when we knew you were coming. And what I think we'd like to do is after this meeting, the word will be out to the people that are selling it that they really ought to stop that. And, and what we intend to do is give them, a, say, a, a two week grace period, 30 days or whatever. And then we're going to start publishing the names of all of the. Uh, retail outlets that are selling this stuff, everybody that we can find. And maybe that'll uh, be enough pressure on it that they'll stop. I don't know well, by, by report of the one two that I know of, Kern's Corner and uh, Johnny Appleseed. You know, that may or may not be true. I don't know that for a fact. This is just what was reported to me. Um, I don't have any reason to doubt them. I mean, these people would have no reason to lie. So. Um, I was thinking if there isn't anything that can be done legally, then just a public shame campaign, I think, would be. Well, exactly. What, was the, what were the symptoms? What were the problems? Was it long-term? Was it serious problems? Well, of course, we don't know. I mean, I just saw these people acutely, but there are widespread reports about the damage that this causes, and it's usually of a psychological nature. Um, and quite honestly, it, 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 you know, people that aren't, pardon the expression, wrapped too tight to begin with, they're going to have problems with any kind of mind-altering mm -hmm. substance. But the problem with this particular thing is that nobody knows exactly what it is. These chemists that cook these things up, they don't do clinical trials to see how this affects people. They tweak it a little bit so they can stay one step ahead of the law, and then they just put it out there. This stuff is pretty expensive, too. I think it's like $30 or $40 for just a little packet. Now, I don't know how much profit they make from this. It's obviously profitable, and they obviously know they shouldn't be doing it because they don't just display it, you know, openly, they hide it, and then they expect people to come in that the word spreads, oh, they can get it here. And Has this been going on long? I, I, don't think I, I don't know how long it's been going on, frankly, but, it? you know, it's going on right now. Yes, it is. Well, and, and, you know, we need to put a stop to it, one way or the other, because somebody's going to get, some other people, beyond those who already have, are going to get hurt from this. Well, I think tonight we'll just sort of notice that anybody that continues to sell this stuff, we're going to make it public knowledge. And maybe that the shame factor, whatever, we're going to start doing. Doc, anything else? That's all I have well, to we say. We sure appreciate you coming down. Yeah, thank you all. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, have you begun to obtain the language to write an ordinance? Um, there's not many ordinances that exist, and, and so I have addressed or tried to address your system. Talk to them municipally. There's not an ordinance in the state. It, the law went into effect November 2014, the first. And um, so I've asked and for other language. There is some language that we got from Florida um, on an ordinance that they have. And, and so we've been working trying to articulate or format 
an ordinance that would fit what we could do and how we could do it. And so it's not that we don't do anything. I don't want it to be like we're not doing anything, but you got to do it right if you're going to do it. I also know that there's things that we can't divulge that are happening, and um, but I think it is being addressed. Um, we're not the only city addressing it. I know that we talked to some of the surrounding Tulsa metro area, and they're trying to address it also. So through so the municipal league, we've been trying to come up with a way that we can put together an ordinance that fits so that we can make that happen. But the chemical derivatives, I don't know how to address how they change it and alter it quickly like that. Um, but I do know that it's been looked at, and I do know that the other agencies involved have looked at it, and we just haven't been able to, I guess, catch those people at the right spot at the right time. And I will say also from the legal standpoint, that is the problem in enforcing this, even from the Oklahoma Bureau, Bureau of Narcotics cannot keep up with these changes. Currently, what has to happen for enforcement purposes is that there has to be a chemist come in and test whatever is purchased, and then that chemist has to give the report that yes, it fits within the framework of the statute. So whatever those prohibited ingredients are, they have to fit that. If they have had the chemical derivative to them, and it does not fit within a specific framework, then it is not an illegal substance under that law. So they have to go through. So it's extremely expensive to go in and try and prove on a case-by-case -case basis. And from a city standpoint, you'd have to have a chemist um, come in and, and testify. The other issue that we have is that we are not a court of record. We can only charge $500. Basically, there's some things that we can charge more. But you would not be able to get the cost back even through a fine for, for doing, you know, one, even the call to the chemist would cost you over that to get that in there. So we've got a situation of, from an enforcement standpoint, even the state is sitting there scratching their heads going, how can we get this stopped? This new law hopefully will add some teeth to it, but I think that the public shame needs to work because I know that it is devastating. I know from a personal level that it is devastating. I would love to be able to get out there and stop it and shut all it down. And the profit is there, six figures in three or four months um, because people are, are buying it. I have thought about that, Luann. Would it, could we put, a, say, a licensing require and, and make it a, a, this category of some sort of uh, chemical substances mm -hmm. and if you to sell it it cost you ten thousand bucks to buy a license could we do anything like that i, I don't I know that you can you're still in the same situation of determining what those chemicals are uh, the sales need to be banned uh, we yeah. need to ban them if we can if we can determine what it is and can identify it somehow we can yeah, yeah. ban it within a certain zone yeah. You can't just say, well, here, you can sell this potentially dangerous chemical, mm -hmm. but it's going to cost you $10,000 yeah. to do it. I don't yeah. think you can do that. Yeah, no, it, it would have to be <laughs> Just out of a sheer curiosity, doctor, is it a rampant epidemic thing that you deal with in the hospital? or oh, And no. it's just sheer morbid curiosity on my point. Oh, you don't want to get me on my soapbox. <laughs> um, just, just a little background. I don't know if you all know, but my wife and I own and operate Tiger Mountain Recovery, which is a drug and alcohol. And I worked 10 years at the New Vision program at the hospital, so I've got quite an interest in this. Now, this is just small potatoes compared to the overall opiate addiction problem that we experience. We're number one, by the way, in this state. Us in Alabama are buying for number one for the uh, sheer number of opiate uh, abuse, uh, the amount of opiate abuse that goes on in this, in this country. But, no, this is a small problem. But I've seen two Henry Eddins that have been adversely affected by this. So I think it's very important. And it's going on just boldly in our community. 